Andrew, for a wonderful pr introduction. Uh, the first, I'm going to briefly go over the agenda for our webinar today. And um, the first uh, part of the webinar uh, will concentrate on overview of the expedited program for drug development and approval. Next, I will introduce the newest FD8 uh, program for expedited drug approval and development called Breakthrough Designation. Subsequently, I will review the breakthrough uh, uh, therapy metrics based on therapeutic categories for cancer and non-cancer indications. And I will end my portion with discussing the data that led to the approval of the breakthrough designated oncology product. In the second portion of the presentation, my colleague Jay Jackson is going to present the case study to illustrate the HEOR-based scenario for development and approval of breakthrough designated product. Next, Jay will discuss the key considerations for various stakeholders, providers, payers, and patients. And lastly, Jay will provide key takeaway messages on the topic of breakthrough designation. Great. And at this point, we have the first poll question for the audience today. And that question, what is your current role in your organization? And you can vote on this in real time by clicking on your screen. Your options are health economics and outcomes research, market access, medical affairs, brand or managed markets, or your final option, other another position not listed above. Again, what is your current role in your organization? Looks like most of you have voted at this point, so I think I'll close polling now and share the results with everyone. And there we have it. 60% of you said another position not listed above. That was followed by 20% saying brand, brand and managed markets. 12% of you said medical affairs and 8% said health economics and outcomes research. With that, I'll hand back the mic to you. Thank you, Andrew. So before I discuss the expedited program, I would like to quickly review the traditional steps for drug development and approval. As all of you know well, uh, preclinical testing lasting about six to seven years is the phase when the drug manufacturers complete synthesis and purification of the drug and conduct limited animal testing. Next, the investigational new drug stage um, takes place, which consists of three phases, phases one, two, and three clinical trial. In phase one, the clinical trial usually are using healthy volunteers, and they are conducted to determine the drug's basic properties and safety profile. However, since the topic for this uh, presentation concentrate on cancer, it is important to emphasize that anti-cancer products are evaluated in patients with advanced cancer. And this is due to the fact that the safety profile of the cancer medication does not allow for testing of them in healthy population. In phase two, Safety and efficacy trial begin as the drug is administered to the target population. And at the end of phase two, the manufacturer meets with the FDA official to discuss the development process, continues human testing, and addresses any concerns that FDA may have. And the protocols for phase three trial are beginning, which are the most extensive and expensive. Once the phase three trial is completed, the manufacturers file new drug application or biologic license application, and then the review of either application typically lasts up to two years, and this brings the total development for drug development and approval of uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 years. Considering this lengthy standard for drug development and approval process, in the 1980s, Pressures from patient advocacy organizations call for action by the FDA to expedite the drug review process. Before that period, the FDA slower process was perceived to be uh, impending the progress in the approval of cancer drugs. With that action, the United States Congress passed new laws um, that pertain to expedited review program, uh, and they were enacted for three different approaches to 2012, and this includes fast track designation, accelerated approval, and priority review. And these programs basically complement one another and serve a common goal, 
and the goal is to speed up the approval of effective treatment for serious conditions. And the thinking behind this common requirement for expedited programs was based on the premise that patients and physicians are generally more willing to accept greater risk for treatment of serious conditions when there is a high net need, which is exactly the premise of the fast track designation. The key of the accelerated approval is the ability to use a surrogate endpoint that is considered reasonably likely to predict clinical benefit. A surrogate endpoint is a, basically a marker, such as laboratory measurement, radiographic image, that is taught to predict clinical benefit, but it's not itself a measure of clinical benefit. And one example that you can think of here is overall response rate. Priority review, which is the last expedited track, is available for drugs that provide a significant improvement in treatment prevention or diagnosis of diseases when compared to existing therapies. This slide um, looks at the three programs in more detail. And the key points as it relates to fast track uh, designation, it, that it entails early and frequent communication between the FDA and sponsors. Under this program, a sponsor may submit sections of the new drug application as they are ready. What this is referred to as roll, rolling review, rather than the standard requirement to submit one complete application in one submission.